So today we're going to be making this soft cup underwire top called the Timor top. This top has been months in the making and sample after sample, she's finally ready. So because this is a more advanced pattern, before we get into the actual stitching tutorial, I just wanted to come here and explain a few things about the pattern itself and the materials you'll be using. There are 5 cup sizes and 25 band sizes, so you definitely can find the right band for your cup and the pattern is layered so you can isolate the size that you want easily. The cup sizes are A, B, C, D, E and I have an underwire guide included in the pattern file. So all you need to do is print it and it's a solid visual of the type of underwire we will be using today. And this is really helpful if you're new to the world of underwires because there are a few types out there and this just helps minimize any confusion. Underwire channeling. I've tried many alternates because I know it's not the easiest to come by. You need underwire channeling. Underwire channeling looks like this and it's a rigid tube that fully encloses the underwires and prevents them from rubbing against the skin and the outer fabric and it's usually made from nylon. The bridge is the center area between the cups. The bridge provides separation and puts everything in proper position to ease into the cups and you will need a medium weight woven fabric for this area to ensure that it doesn't stretch. You can use nylon. I'm using some interfacing that is non-fusible and has no glue, but anything nylon with no stretch would work. The pattern includes two bridge styles, the classic and a minimal. I've taken into account back closures and these are some of the options that will work for this pattern. At the time of this tutorial, my back closures are indefinitely delayed, so I don't have them on hand to show you. Finally, I will be releasing another underwire pattern soon that will be adaptable to this one, so you can mix and match the cups and the bands to create more unique looks. Okay, that's everything, let's get stitching. The first thing you wanna do is print your paper patterns. The patterns are layered like I mentioned earlier and you can isolate not only your cup size but the corresponding band size too. Just make sure you print it 100% or do not scale and double check that the test square measurements match before you cut it out in your preferred size. You do not need to add any seam allowance as it's all included already. So these will be your patterns and now you can cut it in the swim fabric of your choice. You'll end up with these patterns. 4 upper cups, 4 lower cups, 1 bridge, 1 inner bridge support and 2 pairs of bands so for the self and for the lining for both the left and the right sides. And don't forget to cut 2 straps too, the width is up to you and the length is in the guide. Just don't forget to make note with these patterns where the fronts and bottoms are for the cups Sometimes they tend to look quite similar, so you want to do a notch or maybe use a waterable soluble marker like I am to make a note. We're going to start by stitching the straps. We're going to fold the straps right sides together and stitch it all the way down, not forgetting to add elastic before we turn it right sides out. When that's done, we're going to trim about 3 to 4 centimeters of each end. This is so that we can use it for the back strap loops. Now we're going to take the long strap pieces and prep the sliders and loops on them like so. We can put that aside and we're going to work on our bands. Take the small strap pieces and we are going to put them where we want our straps to be. So this is an aesthetic thing, some people prefer it closer to the center back, some people prefer wider. For reference, I'm doing them about 6 centimeters from the center back, but feel free to change it according to your design. You can do a base stitch or a stay stitch to keep it in place before you match it right sides together and stitch the top and the bottom of the band, not forgetting to add elastic. You're going to turn it right sides out and then you can just do a stay stitch just to keep everything in place. And trim any ends that are sticking out, especially in the corners over here. We're going to assemble the bridge now. We're going to do this by folding it on the fold line and stitching the bottom before we insert our inner bridge support piece and use a straight stitch on the edges to keep it in place. Next, we're going to work on the cups. 
So we're going to take the long strap pieces that we've prepped earlier with the loops and sliders and we're going to place it where the notch has been made on the front and do a base stitch. Just make sure you're matching it right sides together so that the loops and sliders are in the correct position. Matching it right sides together, we're going to stitch along that edge and add elastic. When that's done, this is completely optional, but I find that it does make a difference in keeping everything where it's supposed to be. We're going to do a small zigzag understitch on the edge. So you're going to push all the seam allowance towards the back and do a zigzag on the edge. This just helps give that seamless look, but stops the edge from rolling over. Now we're going to take the bottom cups and we are going to match it right sides together, sandwiching the top cup in between that. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm matching the fronts, I'm matching the side seams, I'm just easing that in there. You do not have to add elastic here, and I really recommend using a zigzag stitch um, and then trimming it down to just reduce the bulk here because there are four layers here. But if you feel more comfortable, you can use a small overlock stitch, just trimming it back slightly. And you're going to repeat the same steps on the other side. When both cups are ready, we can stitch a gathering stitch for the bottom cup. To do a gathering stitch, you're going to select the largest stitch setting available in your machine and leave long thread tails. Stitch it, do not back tack on either end and leave long threads on the other end before you cut it. And you're going to take your underwire and measure and cut out the length of your channeling for the underwire. And we're going to gather the underbust area so that it matches to the exact length of the underwire channeling and tie it off. The lower cup has intentionally been made without a seam here, so it has ease. And this is to help create that cup curve and also to ensure that you can adapt it to the underwire that you have available for you. So if it's off by a centimeter, half a centimeter, you can still ease it in to the materials that you have available. So just take your time and distribute the gathers evenly on the bottom of the lower cup. And you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So now you have two pieces that sort of have cups and have that natural curve. So now we've got all our pieces prepped, we can put it all together. So you're going to take one of your cups and one of the bands and match them right sides together and do a stay stitch on the side seam. You can do a stay stitch by hand or with a machine, whatever you prefer. Now you're going to place the bridge matching the right sides together to the point where the upper and the lower cup meet. And you're going to do a stay stitch there too. Now we're going to place our underwire channeling on this cup and we're going to clip it as we go, placing the underwire channeling close to the edge of that seam allowance. And we're going to do a straight stitch on the edge of the underwire casing. So now we're going to fold the underwire casing back and we're going to do another stitch on the edge of the casing being mindful to lightly stretch the garment to avoid any weird gathers. And this is the trickiest bit in my opinion. So go slow and take your time so you have a very nice clean finish. going to repeat the same thing on the other side so first matching the band to the side doing a stay stitch and then matching the point of the upper and lower cup to the bridge and then adding the underwire channeling before we stitch it on the edge 
folding it over and then stitching it once more. You can see it's all coming together now. We're gonna take one end of the underwire channeling and we're gonna do a straight stitch and back tack it a couple of times. Now we're gonna feed our underwire channel through. Push it in a bit deep so we can do the straight stitch on the edge again back tacking it a couple of times just to ensure the underwire is not going to peek through and it is snug in there. And you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Now we're going to take the front straps and loop it through the strap hoop and do a straight stitch right on the edge before we trim any excess. Now all you have to do is finish up the back closures and you have made the Timor underwire top. I love this style, it may be my most favorite pattern to date and I'm really glad that I took my time with it. I hope you can try this pattern out and it is an advanced pattern so if you need any help I'm always here to answer questions and guide you through anything you're unsure of. Happy stitching and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye!